Hi everyone, welcome to Hue at Home. We are in the beautiful Kings Park in Fort Richmond and hope that you are enjoying a very hot summer. We are going to begin with a story about two young men, their unique friendship and how they are finding strength within the circle. Hi Jonathan, it's so good to see you again and welcome Devon to Hue at Home. Uh, mm. It's been a little bit of a while. Jonathan, you were a guest on Our Healing Hearts, and uh, your story, along with Devon, is so incredible. And I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to both of you, go over your story again, but also to talk about strength in the circle and what it means not only to Indigenous men, but I think men in general. Right, guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, Jonathan, Devon, how did the two of you meet? Now, and everybody, this is one pretty incredible story. Um, after my time in the military, I, I uh, struggled with uh, major depressive disorder. I was eventually diagnosed and uh, traits of PTSD and definitely was a problematic drinker. And uh, um, I had moved back up north um, to Norrie House, Manitoba, and got involved in, uh, you know, the, the drug game and uh, a lot of uh, criminal activity, I guess I'll, I'll just blanket statement it. <laughs> and uh, I was I was heavy into cocaine and drinking, and eventually, uh, you know, I was no stranger to the criminal justice system. I was kind of just uh, uh, small offenses, but over time, very mm -hmm. cyclical. And uh, in the last year, in 2017, last year of my drinking, um, I was involved in four incidents with the police. And uh, ultimately, I ended up detained on remand status for just over a month. And um, I was very fortunate to have Veterans Affairs as a result of my tour in Afghanistan to, to offer supports. And uh, I was able to get into two months of residential treatment where I was able to turn my life around uh, to gain the tools to, to change my philosophies and um, gain new perspectives on life and, um, and basically sober up. But it was more about the the outlook on life that really changed um, is really what I gained from all the support that I received. Mm -hmm. um, a year after that, uh, after my sobriety date, I was uh, out celebrating my one one year. It was actually one year and two days, but uh, I was out. The reason I was out so late was uh, I, I got myself a steak dinner and uh, <laughs> with a, <clears throat> with a friend of mine and. We got on a bus, and and that's where I met Devon, <laughs> and uh, uh, so we got into altercation, um, and there was this, uh, a knife involved, and I ended up getting uh, stabbed in the back of the leg um, after a grappling match, and uh, uh, there was a lot of public attention, and. Uh, I felt connected to Devon um, because of, you know, I knew that he had been drinking and, and uh, being indigenous um, uh, and knowing what the struggle is like to a degree. Um, uh, like, I'm, I'm not saying that my path was exactly the same as Devon. Devon has his own story to tell, which is very powerful and, and, I hope he gains um, the the right platforms for for other men and and even children to to hear his story. Um, but through that, I was able to take a restorative justice um, lens and and ultimately connect with um, Devon and and we we just learned about each other got to know each other like deep and uh and and today we're we're like brothers you know we're looking out for each other and 
and trying to see, well, who can you help out next? You know, who, who else is struggling the same way or in similar ways that we have struggled and who can, who just needs that extra support? Wow. So that's in a nutshell. I know, <laughs> I know. Wrong. Yeah. So Devon, I guess your side of the story <laughs> now. All right, yeah, okay. Um, let's see. Okay, well, when the night I met Johnny, I was on a run from, and I was like, I just got out from uh, Federal. Um, I went to uh, the pen for a five-year five year sentence. And yeah, you know, just everything, like things happened where I knew it was gonna happen when I went there, you know? Like I got involved with gangs and it just kind of made me like a worse, like lost more into that, the, the dark path, you know? And then, so then I got out with like no freaking support or nothing, you know? And I was still in that life, yo, and then like, yo, that's why I was like, I used to drink so much, you know, like, weird. And, um, yeah, I just, just drank too much one night, you know, and I don't even remember that, like, I don't remember, like, that night, you know, like, I don't even remember, it's like, seeing Johnny, like, you know, like, weird. Like, I just, like, like, I just snapped out of it, like, yo, like, I was just covered in some blood, and I was just, I was just, like, shit, did I kill someone, you know, like, I was scared and and yeah, you know, then um yeah, like yo, know, I was like like I was just told my lawyer like yeah I did it alright, you know, like alright, I just wanna plead guilty and go back to the pen, you know? Cause for me I was home. Mm -hmm. The pen. That's where I felt comfortable. <clears throat> and then um yeah, I was surprised when my lawyer told me that that Johnny wanted to like help me you know that didn't want me to go back to federal you know because like now i see it from where like he's seen like i see his point of view at the time now mm -hmm. because like there's a lot of guys that just that were like me like who cares if i go back that's home you know mm -hmm. and yeah you know like that's like like he said like who else who's the next guy that we could help you know like because like like there's no better help than like like me, you know, like somebody like me, like who's been through that shit, who knows what you need to be successful when you get out, mm -hmm. you know, like, like I know all that stuff now, like, where, because like, to be honest, when I first got out, I didn't know what I needed, you know, like, because I always had nothing, and, um, like, yo, like, I've been out since October, this is the longest I've ever been out of jail for, I'm sober 60 days tomorrow, and that's pretty good, you know. That's the first time ever getting sober without going to jail. And I actually have a, like a home now, you know. That yeah, like actually, I came home last night and actually, like, I told my girlfriend this. I was like, "Yo, this is like the best feeling ever, having a house key, coming home, you know, to my room." It's just like, it's like, I would say I'm pretty spoiled, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, because I have a lot of things that I never had before, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's how like I think like you know like I think I had to like go to like through all that shit you know mm -hmm. just to like be like who I am today like because like I'm gonna like yo like yo I really want to like help people you know because I know what it's like to live like in the lowest you know like word and there's a lot of people out there who. If they had to support how I had it, you know, mm -hmm. they would be successful like me too, you know, like we're they change their life around too. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, I mean, it's always, it's always so nice to have a second start, which both of you have done. So now let's talk about strength in the circle. Why did you want to form something like this? And do you have an idea on what strength in the circle is going to look like? Or, and how are you going to try and get the word out, Johnny? Well, um, when I first came into recovery, it was a result of the compassion of 
uh, two strangers. I talked about this in my last interview, uh, James Fable and, and his mother, Janet Ross. Uh, Janet, a uh, lovely woman. She, uh, um, we lost her last year, uh, early last year, uh, unfortunately. Um, uh, she's in a better place. And But uh, when I first met her, um, she she gave me a place to stay um, and and she was like a mother to me um, and it was just enough for me to get back on my feet and focus on my healing focus on my recovery and uh, it was that experience that 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 uh, that really stuck with me um, because of that compassion that's how I got involved in Winnipeg's Bear Clan Patrol mm -hmm. um, and and just got hooked on giving back and wanting to wanting to look at myself and figure out what my gifts are. Um, and and for me, it was looking at, back at my experiences and like Devon talked about, um, well, all that stuff that we we've gone through. How do we how do we take that and and use that mm -hmm. in a good way mm -hmm. um, to help others? Um, so I so I already had this idea that I wanted to get into program development to help men um, see that little short stint that I spent in uh, in provincial on remand status um, I was there with other men um, and a lot of them were saying the same things you know okay I'm gonna get this right I'm gonna I'm gonna turn my life around I, um, but uh, I really messed up um, how I'm, I'm gonna get it right this time mm -hmm. and for me I had Veterans Affairs, I had all this support ready to go. N nobody else got that same support. And even after I did my residential treatment, the two months, I went back up north to Norring House and the, the supports were inadequate. Like I knew that if I stayed up there, I eventually I would relapse. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I knew that. And so that's what got me geared towards moving back down south. Mm -hmm. um, Winnipeg, where I can really wrap myself around in that in that community of support. Um, so so yeah, I'm back on the streets with Winnipeg's Bear Clan Patrol. I just I knew I wanted to create something for men. I wanted to focus on young men because um, I, I I knew that there's I know that there's a lot of men out there struggling in Manitoba um, as Indigenous people. Uh, we were overpopulated in the criminal justice system. Uh, we represent 75% of the prison population here in Manitoba. Our neighbors uh, to the west in Saskatchewan, 74%. So again, three, three quarters of the prison population. On a national level, we represent 50%. And, and this is unacceptable. And if you look at the recent discoveries with the residential school system. Um, that's a stark reminder of what has happened and why our communities are in, in the conditions that they're in on a, in a, on a social um, mm -hmm. or in a social uh, <coughs> mm -hmm. So the, when I met Devon, that kind of, okay, that kind of ramped things up. It was like, okay, mm -hmm. we really do need this and, and we need to do it like now because I, I, was, I, I was able to intervene in Devon's court process and um, we were able to come together as a community and do uh, a, a sentencing circle. Um, and it was the first of its nature in, in Winnipeg uh, of a crime that, of that level. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so so we were able to set a new precedent of getting him getting uh, um, him released early and and into the supports that we were going to create. Um, so while Devon was still in custody, um, we 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 got active with Strength in the Circle. We launched uh, three initiatives. Three, primary initiatives, uh, which were all holistic by nature. Um, Subgen awareness focused on mental aptitudes, uh, 
with learning the, the, the historical components of our, our current reality. So there's a lot of reading um, and learning together um, and gaining that systemic overview. Uh, another initiative was our fitness crew. So focusing on physical fitness, mm -hmm. um, you know, the social detriments of health. And uh, there's a lot of problems physically um, and when you think about trauma and the physiological impacts it has, um, it, a lot of that can be uh, helped through physical fitness. Uh, For sure. mm -hmm. So it's, it's important that we're taking that holistic approach. And uh, the other initiative we, we launched was our, our sharing circles, uh, so Peaceful Warriors. We had a men's group and a co-ed group. And Yes. And the co-ed group was aimed to, to restore balance, um, to gain understanding of, mm -hmm. of, of each other in, in our gendered roles. Um, and, and all of our initiatives had, um, had a level of spirituality involved. Um, yes, so. definitely. Spirituality is really important. Devon, what was the one thing, or maybe there's multiple things that you, that you take away with? I sense, too, that there's definitely a lot of anger involved, right? Um, and frustration. But for you, how did you overcome that and become the person that you are now today? I would say, to be honest, yo, I would say just letting people in, you know? Mm -hmm. Like in my circle, like letting them help me. It's one thing I never, I never used to do that before. Where like, I was like, like yo, it was like just me against everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like actually like letting the right people, like positive people, like you know, just like like letting them help me and yeah, it's actually like yo, like I'm not like the same person like I was like the first day I got out of jail. Like no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, like actually. Yeah, and wow. yeah, like, oh, like weird. I wish I, I wish some people could just see like the old me, mm -hmm. and then just see what I'm like now today. You know, and I just be like, holy smokes, like what happened? You know. <laughs> wow. So Jonathan, too, there is also well, I spoke about anger, the frustration, but there's also, I guess, that male role, right, that you have to play. And I think nowadays too, right, I mean, there's all things about mental health. And mental health for men is really important because most of the time they don't let people in, right? Devon, right? You were just saying you got to let the right people in. So is this another thing too for strength in the circle as to be able to talk, let your feelings out? You don't have to have that male toxicity anymore. Yeah. Um, well... When I was just kind of at the drawing board with strength in the circle, um, the 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 hot topic in the community was around toxic masculinity, and and I was uh, and that was kind of where my focus started. It was like, well, how do we address this toxic masculinity? This idea that we're not supposed to have emotions that we need to keep that bravado or or that. Uh, you know, we gotta be tough and and all the time, and 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 we don't have to have any room for vulnerability, and and so I was actually focused on toxic masculinity, and and after talking with a, a friend who is a fellow advocate, I I, uh, I realized that there was a problem with that. I was like focusing on just the negative, and and I was stumped, and and I said. Uh, I really want to address toxic masculinity, but I don't really want to talk too much about toxic masculinity. And um, she said, well, why don't you talk about healthy masculinity? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that's what, what I started to focus on was what was healthy masculinity. That's the conversation I wanted to have. Um, mm -hmm. And like I wanted to talk about, well, those things so, of, you know, we're men, but we have feelings. We, you know, we can cry. Um, we, we don't have to be tough all the time on the exterior. You know, um, vulnerability is a way to strength. Mm -hmm. so, 
So that's that's kind of where the the sharing circles were geared towards was was breaking those those stigmas and those uh, those old beliefs. Um, yeah. Well, you know what? Between the two of you, I think the more you talk about this, and we all know that you really want to help, that you you are the perfect examples of how this can work. And uh, what an amazing story! And it's very cool that the two of you now are like brothers so it's that's proof that this does work so congratulations to both of you i know that this is going to grow and especially in times like this that we're still in this pandemic and whatever normal is going to look like it'll be different and something like this will be definitely needed for a lot of people so congratulations strength in the circle thank you jonathan and thank you devon it's been a really wonderful uh, insight into what you're doing. Welcome back to Hugh at Home. Coming up, I have a sit-down chat with Desiree Dorian. She's got a brand new single out for summer. And hey, who doesn't want to have a drink every once in a while? It is so good to see you, Desiree. It has been such a long time, but uh, I'm so happy you're doing music. I love the single. Uh, sometimes I got a drink, too. <laughs> I, I know. Fashion time, Tracy. It's so good to see you as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. So exactly where are you? Right now, mm -hmm. I am in Portage La Prairie. This is where Stephen lives. And, uh, and so I come to him when we do some of these online things because he has better internet than I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I live in, uh, in Dauphin, so I'm 10 miles uh, south of town along the Riding Mountain National Park. And we, uh, we have beautiful, beautiful landscape, but not beautiful internet. <laughs> You know, that is now the one thing, right, that uh, we all need to have is Wi-Fi. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <Yeah. laughs> exactly, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, we, we, we've, we've made, managed to make do over the course of the year. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's talk about what you have been up to because you have been pretty busy. You know, uh, well, well, let's talk first about the single, collaborating with Crystal Shawanda, another mm -hmm. person of greatness, too, as well. And I guess she is kind of a mentor for you, right? Like she is yeah, someone that so, you look up to. Absolutely. Yeah, without a doubt. We, um, Stephen and I were down in New Orleans in January last year and we rented a car. Um, we were there for a showcase uh, with Folk Alliance International and um, we rented a car after that event was done. We drove north through the bayou to Nashville and I had a week of uh, writing sessions booked up and and um of course all of those are pre-planned before you get there you don't just show up to Nashville and <laughs> knock on doors and hope someone's going to sit down and write with you um but one of the pre people that I reached out to was Crystal Shawanda and um I honestly didn't expect her to say yes um but you know in in, in the music business um you get used to a lot of no's and you ask anyway um, because you never know what the answer is going to be and I was fortunate that she uh, graciously agreed to uh, to write with me. So she invited me into her home. Um, you know, I got to met, meet her husband and her her little do her little girl, her daughter Jaja, and um, and we we sat down and we talked this one out. I had a, a I had a title, and I said, "This is what I want to do. I want it to be fun. I want it to be an upbeat song." And we talked it out, and within three hours, we had this uh, this song. Wow, that's so amazing. And also, too, if we want to talk about not only women in music, 
but of course women of color in music and especially country music, right, yeah. uh, Desiree? And I wanted to talk a little bit more about you hosted a, a chat about yeah. that very thing, indig indigenous artists in the yeah, business. Exactly. We, um, I was in talks with the Canadian Country Music Association uh, back in January, and I knew my friend Donna Merrow had been doing a lot of legwork behind the scenes um, already prior to that. Uh, and, you know, we, we had talked about what, what the CCMA could do to, um, I guess, you know, bring, uh, use their platform to uh, elevate Indigenous voices. And, uh, and they, they called me in early May and said, this is something that we're, we're looking at doing in June. Would you be interested in hosting? And I had never hosted anything in my life before, Tracy. And <laughs> honestly, like, your job is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the research that you have to do and the, um, anyway, that, that's not the point of it. The point of it is that I agreed to do it and um, I think it was a, a beautiful example of what reconciliation can look like, a tangible, uh, meaningful example of, um, you know, how organizations can uh, elevate Indigenous voices and uh, use their platforms to... Um, you know, raise awareness and to um, to promote Indigenous music and Indigenous artists. And so we um, we ta I talked with uh, Troy Kokel, who's an incredible songwriter, mm -hmm. uh, had, has had over 250 cuts, which is insane because that means that you need to write at least a thousand songs probably to get that many cuts. Um, and then uh, we talked with Donna Merrow. We talked with Jade Turner. Uh, Crystal Shawanda, of course, was one of the guests, and um, Alan Grey Eyes. And so the entire month of June, the Canadian Country Music Association has used their social media platforms to give a voice and to give space to Indigenous artists and industry people. And um, it's the first time in history that it's ever been done, and I'm really, really proud to have been a part of it. Oh, that, that's so amazing. And especially now, and I mean, with everything that is going on and, uh, you know, it, it, sometimes you're for a loss of words, so it's nice to have music to be able to express your thoughts and feelings, and I'm sure you feel the same way too as well. Um, you know, moving on though for you, Desiree, have you ever felt or had barriers or challenges to overcome along your way? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was raised by a single mom. I'm a member of the Opasquiat Cree Nation, and um, I was, uh, you know, I grew up in a, in a rural community in, in the city of Dauphin, and um, my mom was a single parent, and, you know, we didn't, I didn't have things like guitar lessons or voice lessons, and that's really common in the Indigenous music community when you, when you um, start meeting artists and asking about what kinds of um, barriers uh, artist space and that's really one of them you know when when you see incredible musicians and guitar players and, or drummers or you know whatever instrument it is that they play they've been honing that craft for years and um, you know in many ways I feel like that has been an extreme barrier for me you know it, it hasn't been until I've been in my probably mid-20s where I could actually chord you know just play very basic chords and so I've had to hang around my friend Stephen for a long time because he's far better than I am at, uh, at you know, at, at, at playing guitar. But I, I really think that that is, um, that's an example of, of a barrier that artistically um, we can't possibly be as advanced because we haven't had those advantages or those opportunities early on to hone those crafts and hone those skills. Yeah. Now moving forward then, obviously we can see yourself as a as a mentor for other young indigenous women that want to have a music career what can we do and i may maybe i'm talking more on the music industry side what can we do now moving forward to help the new wave of musicians of any color being able to come forward yeah that's a loaded question i mean i think um I was talking with Alan Gray Eyes in the Achimatak series, which is the CCMA series, and he was talking about systemic barriers that uh, festivals face, mm -hmm. that uh, festivals who've been around for a really long time have access to operational grant funding that um, new and emerging Indigenous festivals just simply don't have. 
So I think um, on a systemic level, there needs to be, uh, you know, changes to those granting stipulations so that Indigenous festivals have opportunities to showcase um, their artists. Um, that, and that was something that I learned in that in the Achimatak Attack series. I didn't know that that was uh, that was the way that the, the grant funding worked for festivals. And so, um, but I think on on an individual level, uh, you know, more opportunities for uh, emerging artists to um, practice and hone their craft. Like mm -hmm. I, I really think that if if an art it, it, me as an artistic kid if I, if someone had given me a guitar and and guitar lessons or if someone had given me voice lessons i i wonder how much further i would have been able to take my music career at, at this current stage um you know comparatively speaking um so i think that on the creative side that that really needs to be nurtured at a very young age yeah well you have definitely nurtured yourself into a wonderful singer-songwriter, and I am so happy that you are going to do your new single. Thank you so much, Stephen, for your, your home, your Wi-Fi, <laughs> accompanying uh, Desiree on this incredible single. Um, wishing both of you all the best for the summer, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see you both perform live Thanks on stage. Thank you so much, Tracy. Appreciate yes. it. Okay. This is time to drink. Okay. Sometimes I like a glass of wine on Friday night at the lonesome high. Forget about the bills and chill. Forget about everything. It's been all uphill. I don't do this all the time. I just need this tonight. Well, I might get it wrong, but I'm just trying to get it right. Yeah, sometimes I drink, get a buzzing in my brain. I don't want to complain, but I'm going insane. I think I'm going to go ahead and pour just a little bit more. Try to ignore you. Yeah, sometimes I drink. Carrying the weight of the world now I deserve a night with the girls I don't need a guy to buy me a drink I don't need anyone to buy me anything I've been trying to do it all But I'm not doing anything right No, I don't do this all the time But I just need this tonight Sometimes I drink Get a buzzing in my brain I don't want to complain But I'm going insane I think I'm going to go ahead and just a little bit more Try to ignore you yeah, Sometimes I drink Ooh, yes, yeah, sometimes I drink All the time, but I just need this tonight. Sometimes I drink, get a buzzing in my brain. I don't want to complain, but I'm going insane. I think I'm going to go ahead and pour just a little bit more. Try to ignore you. Sometimes I drink. Ooh, yeah, sometimes I drink. Oh, yeah, yeah, sometimes I drink. Sometimes I drink, I said sometimes I drink, yes yeah, sometimes I drink. We want to give a very special thank you to all of our guests on today's show and ask you this question, what is your favorite summer hangout? We want to know, so send us an email to hello at ilikehugh.com or you can message us on Facebook and Instagram at ilikehugh. But for now, stay safe and stay healthy, and we'll see you next time on Hugh at Home.